and welcome to Rara's Adventures. For today's vlog, we are visiting Ambly Museum. Today we came by car, but you can get here by train at the Ambly train station, which is based right next door to Ambly Museum. You can also catch a bus from, from Littlehampton to Ambly on the 700 Coastliner, which will take about an hour and 16 minutes or get a taxi. There are There is a car park which is free but there is a height restriction of 2.25 metres in their main car park but if you know your vehicle is larger then you can call them before coming to let them know and they will open the barrier for you. From reading their website before coming we have learnt that they have 36 acres site which is mostly flat with some slopes in place. There is also nature trails around the site but these are inaccessible to wheelchairs and some buggies depending on their type. They do loan out wheelchairs if needed but suggest reserving them before coming to guarantee that you'll get one. They also provide seating around the grounds and if you need a break you can and they have also put seating in the expedition building for the same reason. Before we start I wanted to share a little about Amberley Museum. From the 1840s and the 1960s chalk was quarantined and burnt in the kills at Amberley to make lime and mortar decorating an archaeological use. I cannot say that word. Ambly is now a museum which you can see and walk around and inter interact whilst learning at the same time. Here are some of the things that we will come across today. We will be coming across transport, industrial, communications, crafts and nature trails. So let's start exploring! See? Um, I wanted to stop here and read a little bit about it. So the grinding mill was used to reduce any lumps of fired lime into the Eveling and Porter locomotive from the adjacent locomotive shed by belt attached to a locomotive's flywheel. The carrying the lime were sh shunted into position alongside the mill. The sides of the wagon were dropped onto the still covered shoveling area where the lumps of lime were broken with a hammer into the size of cricket balls. The lime was then shoveled into the mill via the wooden feeder. The lime was bagged of through a pair of steel shunts. The slats were held on hooks on either side of the chunk during the filling. Wooden platform scales which stood alongside were used for weighing the full sacks. The mill could grind the lime at a rate of about two tonnes an hour. Milling stopped here during the 1940s when new equipment was installed near the Dewitt Kiln. So, we have just come across the Dover Pump House and I just wanted to read a little about it. And um, as you can hear, you can hear it working on display. Um, so this building housed a lighting and pumping plant. It came from Dover on the Amarin estate. The stationary engine drove a pump for water and a dymo for electric lighting. It is typical of the type of pump house found serving many country houses in the end of the 19th century. The dynamo produced enough energy to light 2,500 watt lamps. The deep well pump was capable of supplying between 200 and 300 gallons of water per hour. The three quarter high type costly petrol paraffin engine, that's a mouthful, um, was manufactured in 1923. It's not the original. 
traditional use in the pump house, but it is one of the similar size and horsepower. The pump house was donated to the museum by the Norfolk Estate at Arundel in 1986. history part um, we just want to show you some of the bits around here so in this building here it's all disabled friendly it's got a ramp going up and you've got all the old work tools that they use which I've taken lots of photos of um, and here is a timber frame it is humongous um, and this hand-operated crane was used in the Cholton sawmills near Chichester for raising the lids from charcoal canes and for lifting heavy pieces of timber. Although the maker and the exact age of the crane are not known, it is thought to date from the late Victorian period, so it's an old piece of equipment and it's still in pretty good nick as you can see and it's so big i also want to show you because i can't resist motorbikes this beautiful motorbike here which is lovely it's just here we're not allowed to touch it but we like it a lot don't we it's a very nice bike i just put a shed up with me okay so let's Carry on. Turn the stick. Cool. Magic trick. <laughs> so these are the sort of flowers we make them look. Right. Yeah. We what we start off with yep. is a piece of that, which is a hazel rod. Hazel's so rod. hazel is like the tree that's growing over the top of the building behind you there. Yeah. But what hop, what they often do with hazel is they coppice it. So they let the tree grow up, chop it all down, it grows back up again. And when it grows back up, it actually grows nice and straight, huh, yeah. and nice and long, lovely, and without any big side branches in it, which is why we love it as much as we do. Yeah. And so, if you want to work with it, and it, it's used to make fences and panels, fence panels and things like that, but it works very nicely when you're trying to cut it because it hasn't got lots of knots in it. Okay. So what we need first is our cordless drill. Yeah. So, and then we just drill a little hole down the middle of the stem, and we're doing that now because that's where the stem is going to go for the flower once we've actually finished. Yeah. Aww. And it's a lot easier to do it while it's still a stick than it is once it's a flower. Okay. So the next thing is we have a thing called a draw knife. Yeah. Now this is one of those wonderful old-fashioned tools that breaks all of the rules that you were ever taught if you went to school and did woodworking. Yeah. Basically, you've got an eight-inch long razor blade with a pair of handles on it, right. and it is it is getting that sharp. It is towards shaving sharp, yeah. And then somebody's put a nice pair of handles on the end of it so that you can then use it to actually pull towards yourself, which is of course something you never ever do. You never ever cut towards yourself. And to show you how sharp it is, look. If I just grab it like that between my little pinkies, there you go. Look. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that gives you a, that gives you a clue as to how sharp that actually is. Yeah. I'll go back to using it how I should do. Now the only reason I actually peel the bark off of it is I'm trying to make a flower. And I don't think that brown is a particularly nice colour for a petal for a flower. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So what we do is we go around the stick, usually like this, about five or six inches long. Oh, I expect you're metric, aren't you? So, um, no. What's that? <laughs> oh, you're, in, you're still imperial. I am, yeah. That's okay then, because otherwise, what's that? 15, 15 to 18 centimetres. Something like that. Right, so I've now peeled the stick. The stick is also what we call green. So it was, two weeks ago, it was still a growing branch. Yeah. yeah. So it's still got moisture in it, which is actually a good thing. And the reason that in the old days, when people were working with hand tools, they used to use green wood is it's easier to work physically. Okay. You need less strength to actually cut it. So now what we're going to do is start making petals. 
So what we do is what we were doing, but trying to stop half an inch before we finish. So that is our first petal of our flower. All we now need to do is repeat that 50 or 60 times, parking each next flower petal within sort of one thirty second of an inch of the one we've just made, without either cutting off the one we're making or the one we've just made. Okay. Okay. What we do is we pull it down and just park it there, and we overlap each one by sort of half a petal. So we gradually start making our way round the stick as we do it. Yeah. And by holding the knife at a bit of an angle, so rather than coming straight down the stick at me, by going across a bit of an angle, it sort of puts the pieces of wood out to one side. So it means I can actually still see what I'm actually doing. Yeah. Sometimes she's. Yeah. So as we go down, round the stick, gradually we're making more and more petals. Yeah. And the idea is to try and keep them as consistent as you possibly can, so that they're you don't end up with one great big fat one and one great big <laughs> one <laughs> skinny tiny one. And like that. You just try and keep them as consistent as they are, because strangely, nature is remarkably good at doing that. You know. Yeah. You, uh, a little bit of plant and all of the petals are sort of the same sort of size or gradually graduate down yeah, from yeah. bigger to smaller. Now once I've been around once, you've actually sort of created a rib that you can pull down against. There's a sort of ring at the bottom of the piece yep. of wood. So now life gets a little easier because you're less likely to actually go straight out the end of it. Right. Yeah, so now we can pick up speed. a little yeah. bit of speed uh, and hopefully not end up ruining what we're doing. The only reason I, ha I do it a little quicker is that unfortunately some of our, our younger visitors get have bored. the attention span of a neck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And if you haven't produced something within a minute or a minute and a half, they're gone. <laughs> so, but anyway, so as of course we keep going round and round and round, the stick round the back, let's just stop and show you. So the stick around the back of there, look, is now getting really quite skinny. Yeah. 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 What we're going to do is cut right the way through until the flowery bit, the curly bit, falls off. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what we're making at the moment is the petals in the centre. Yeah. yeah. So you make those slightly shorter? I try to. It, you tend to kind of do it naturally because you've already sort of formed a bit of a slope. Yeah. Did you hear that yeah. sound? Yeah. That's the fibres in the wood. Just breaking. Uh. So it's just giving me a warning that it's just about ready to come off. To come off. Oh, and so there cool. is your flower. Wow. Clever, isn't it? Okay, so I'll just go and get a, a stem. And we we actually grow our own, would you believe? We grow our own mm. stems. So at home I have a little crab apple tree. Right. Yeah. And each year I prune the crab apple tree so and it grows good. about that much each year. Wow. So what we've got a little tiny hole in the back of there and yeah. a stick. Now the clever bit is working out at what point down that stick <laughs> it's get. the same size as that <laughs> hole. Yeah. And I reckon it's probably about there. That's so we now put that up to there. Oh, brilliant. Just like we meant it, there is the flower. Oh, that's so cool. Really and clever, the wonderful it? thing about it is that smells lovely. Really? It really does. You try that. Oh my God, smell. Oh, it does, doesn't it? We think yeah. it's so fresh. Mm. Yeah. Wow. We think it smells like watermelon. It does actually, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. people will say pear yeah. or yeah. apple, no, yeah. but, but watermelon yeah. is where we are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. lovely. And so that is how you make a flower out of a stick. Now this traditionally was what the travellers used to do, the gypsies. They right. them, but they made them in a different way to how I make mine. Right. So rather than using all of this Kit. Yeah. What they would do is they would use, if I can find it, a, oh, pegging, right. a oh. pegging knife. Okay. Yeah. And what they would do, they would just sit outside and just put the knee, their knife into the knee, and then yeah. they would just do that. Huh. Right. Yeah. And in fact, some of them, would, instead of doing that, would actually do it that way, so that they'd have a blade square on. Right. And they would actually do it that way. And if you ever get bored one day, <laughs> go onto the internet, <laughs> put in gypsy flowers, yeah. and there will be an old boy called John on there down at the Appleby or up at the Appleby Horse Fair. Yeah. And he must be certainly in his 80s. 
and he is sitting there and he's chatting away to people and he's got that light and he goes and then these huge great flowers, bigger than any of these ones, just come off the end. What on them? Wow. They often used to use elder wood. Right. Yes, yeah, so some elderberries now. Yeah. 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 And if you know anything about wood, elder wood is remarkably soft. Yeah. Right. And it has a core. Yes, a, a sen soft central core. Yeah. yeah. All right. wood, if you look down the, in the end of there, you see there's a little dot right yeah. in the middle yeah. of the piece of wood. That is always a soft bit in the middle, but on yeah. the elder wood, it is bigger than that. And so they didn't even need to drill a hole. They would just yeah, literally push yeah. the stick, push the stick yeah. in that soft core. Brilliant. Uh, and as I say, so that is how we sort of came across the idea by seeing how other people had done it traditionally. Yeah. Then uh, once, once you've made them, at the moment these would be too wet to do it, but within a day or two they will dry. Yeah. And then what they would do is they would dip them in buckets of dye, tie them into bundles, and then sell them as bunches of dried flowers. Yeah. Oh, that's so clever. And then mm. the other thing is that's so pretty. That if you use dry wood, I'm afraid this is here's one I did earlier. Yeah. <laughs> you end up with a bit like that look. So look how curly those yeah. greens are on there. Yeah. yeah. And that is purely the difference between making it with a piece of green wood or making oh. it with a piece of dry wood. <laughs> Physically, to make that dry one yeah. is a lot harder. Because of, Each, yeah. you know, yeah, you got, whereas you saw when I was yeah. doing that, I yeah, just hold it with two soft. fingers, yeah. it was yeah. nice and soft. Yeah. As the wood dries, it hardens. Yeah. yeah. I like these a lot. Yeah, they're sweet. You know, and certainly when you put them together, the other thing you can see is that where they would have dried, look, the wood is different colour. Yeah. Different yeah. colour. Yeah. 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 And then you get a bit of character. So you can then mix and match, and you can have, you know, three or four of these, three or four of those, and then yeah. the other thing we do is the these end bits because we have to cut them off to make the next flower. Sometimes what we would do is what we've done with this pot here. Look. So what we've done is then used oh, right. a couple of the points off of the ends, yeah. Yeah. put them onto there and then make them look like flower buds. Yeah. So yeah. in that case here you've got four flowers, four flowers, two buds, and then a little flower pot. pot. Oh. And the flower pots, we actually still drill by hand. So right. we have Excellent. over here. Oh, a big, yeah, right, yep. Wow. Yep. A shipwright auger. Yeah, so these mm. were a lot of the time we used in the dockyards for drilling big holes when we were building boats out of oak. Yeah. And they were held together with oak pegs. Yeah. And that is what you would use. And this wow. one has got a, a different eye on it. Most of the ones oh, you yeah. see are just flat, just got a flat. with yeah. a wing. Yeah. These are, this is known as a bullnose one, because you can see it's got two nostrils. Yeah. Yeah. And it is designed to drill into wood into the end grain. So whereas normally you drill into wood... Normally when you drill wood, you often drill it that way. Yeah. Into the grain. But this thing is designed no, to drill down through there. Right. So when we make... These, that's yeah. what we use to drill the hole. Oh my god, brilliant. So, go. so it's all done. And that one is 110 or 112 years old. Wow. You can see all of the woodworm and things that's yeah. been in the handlet's all been yeah. dyed. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. And they are, and I will still use that over a conventional normal uh, drill. Sort of bit of, so I'll just try and show you if I can. Work. Put him in there. My most favourite device. <laughs> this yeah. is a device that you can tip over. Tip over and tighten up. Tip over and spin it round in all directions, then tighten it up. Yeah. Um, it is Mr. Parkinson's ball base vice size A. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I bought it at the Chichis Car Boot Hunt. Oh right. Uh, the, the old, these have auctions. Yeah. Wednesday. Right. I bought it in there in pieces and um, took it home and put it together. And, uh, and it's wonderful because it really grips hold of things. We give it a go. So there's that screw going into the wood. Yep. Yeah. Now in a minute you'll hear the difference. Yeah. yeah. And you can see 
how nicely that cuts into that piece of wood. This didn't have a couple of turns, it's already oh, yeah. cut into oh, wow. there, yeah. and that little screw just pulls it in. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely incredible pieces. Yeah. I'd rather use one of these than the spade the normal, yeah. drill bit that yeah, you yeah. get. Yeah, because like drilling into the end of wood, with, even with a modern drill bit, is nice. often not very good at all. Nice. So there you go. Brilliant. Oh. Hi guys, just wanted to say that we've just stopped for some lunch because we needed a break. Um, there's lots of places that you can stop and have a picnic if you bought your own stuff. Or you can go into the cafe here and buy something for lunch. So we've just had some lunch and now we're going to carry on with our adventures. Yay! So we have just come up to the South Down bus shed where they have old fashioned buses which are lovely. Um, they run the buses on Sundays at the moment and they are trying to get ready to run the buses during the week as well so if you get a chance definitely worth getting on and having a ride they're not wheelchair accessible because of the age of the buses which is understandable but the train is wheelchair accessible so we just wanted to show you what the buses look like Hi, so we have just come across the pottery shed which is pretty amazing and normally they do activities where you can get involved and make plates or cups but at the minute they're not able to do that but they've got loads of stuff here and I just wanted to share it with you really so if you come with me and we'll just have a quick nosy inside not very busy. The lady's over there making some stuff in there. Clays and cups. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we Hello. just want to say hi. So we have come to the end of our day at Ambly Museum and we have had a lovely day. We would like to say a massive thank you to Ambly Museum staff for letting us come along today and visit their brilliant location and to share with others what to expect whilst visiting. We would also like to say a big thank you to all our supporters on YouTube and if you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up so that you don't miss any more adventures coming up. We hope that you enjoyed today as much as we did. Obviously we didn't show you everything because you won't want to come. So we look forward to seeing you next time we do Ra Ra's Adventures and thank you for joining us. Bye!